everybody! Today we're going to be continuing our exploration of area and we're going to be looking specifically at how we can determine the area of a rectangle when the array inside, all those grid lines inside, are incomplete or not finished. So you'll see I have an example to start us off with right here on the front and you'll see I have a completed array on our first rectangle here where the grid is filled in and we can see our squares and I know they're not quite square but I had to draw this myself so pretend they're squares okay and then we have another rectangle where some of the parts are missing right they've been kind of erased or crossed off and so what we want to look at today is how can we find the area of that second rectangle even though we don't have all the lines drawn in and you may already have a sense of how this will work hopefully because we sort of previewed this last week so let's take a look at our first rectangle. Just a reminder, when we're looking for the area of a rectangle and we're trying to find the area, all we need to do is to multiply the number, uh, the length of the side by the length of the other side. So length times width. So we're gonna multiply the number of rows times the number of columns, right? Or times the number of items in each row. So in this case, let's take a look at our first array. If we take a look at the left side and we think about how many rows, we can see that there are four rows, right? One, two, three, four. And so we know this side is four, and let's say these are square, <clears throat> let's say there's a, these are square inch tiles. So the left side is four inches. Now, if we wanna take a look at how many columns or how many in each row, We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six in each row, which means this side length is six inches. So to find the area of the whole, hold on, hole. To find the area of the whole, excuse the dog in the background, of this whole rectangle here, the whole thing, we're just going to do four times six. And I would like to see everybody start to use some efficient strategies to find the area rather than counting by ones, okay? Yes, you could count all those squares, but as you're going to see in some of our future examples, if the squares aren't drawn, we're going to lose that possibility. So in this case, we can do one of two things. We can count by fours. So we can go four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24 and if you want to do that you can also keep track of your skip counts underneath or on the side 4 8 12 16 20 24 I've counted by fours six times and I've gotten an area of 24 don't forget those units square inches I could also choose to count by sixes if I'm comfortable with that so I can go six 12, 18, 24. <clears throat> and I could list that on the side as well. 6, 12, 18, 24. You could also consider, and I've seen some of you doing this, using the distributive property. Maybe you want to break that 4 up into a 2 and a 2 and say, I know what 2 times 6 is, so I'll just do 2 times 6 plus 2 times 6 which gives me 12 plus 12 to equal my 24 square inches. So we wanna start recognizing that we can use all these strategies for multiplication that we've been talking about when we're finding the area. So now look at example number two. What's happened here? We've got some parts that are erased, right? They're crossed off. So again, if you need to see those lines, one thing you can do is start to draw them in, right? Just kind of follow them through because we do have some of them drawn, right? And you can kind of complete the picture like this. However, if you don't want to have to take the time to draw all those lines, remember that you can think about the side lengths, right? So I can look at how long is my side here. Well, clearly I have one, two, three, four inches. And if I want to look at my side length here, one, two, three, four, five, six, six inches. You'll notice I made it the same as the top one, right? If we know the left side is four inches and the top side is six inches, and we know to find the area of a rectangle, we just multiply those side lengths, 
I can just solve by doing 4 times 6, which we've already proved is 24 square inches. It saves me the time from having to draw all those lines in. No need. Especially when we get to larger rectangles, we don't want to have to draw all those lines and count all those squares. Let's take a look at another example. I've got another grid here that you can see has been covered by a green, and in this case, I'm calling it a rug. So I'm pretending this is my living room floor, and I have a green rug on the floor, and I want to know what is the area of my floor. So let me just move this whole thing over so I can give myself a little more room to work here. If I want to think about what is the area of the, whoops, of the whole floor, not just the rug, the whole floor, including the part underneath the rug. I'm going to take a look again at my side lengths. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to label my sides. I'm gonna count my side lengths. <clears throat> Let's get a different color here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And since this is a living room, let's say this is six feet, right? Six inches doesn't make sense for a living room floor. So we know the side length is six feet. Now, it's hard to see on this side how many tiles there are, isn't it? So I'm gonna look down on the bottom because we know with rectangles, the opposite sides are always the same length. So whatever length this side is here, that's gonna also be the same length here. So I'm just gonna look at the bottom and count my side lengths and I'll make this one in um, blue here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This side is also six feet. Whoa, somehow I moved everything. Okay, so we've got six feet on the left side, six feet on the bottom, which also means the top is six feet and the right is six feet. And remember, in order to find the area, we can simply multiply our two side lengths. So our equation becomes six times six. Now, if you needed to, once again, you could finish off drawing all those lines to find out the area underneath, but we don't want to waste our time doing that. If we know to find the area, we can just multiply six times six. Let's use our strategies to do that. <clears throat> so one thing we could do, we could count by sixes, right? And I could keep track. I can say this is six, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. Or I can use my distributive property. I could break my six up into, let's say, a three and a three. Maybe I know my three facts pretty well. So now I can solve the problem six times three plus six times three, which will make things a little easier. And I can count by three, six times three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. So I know this is 18 plus another 18. And I can add that together. I know 10 plus 10 plus eight plus eight, right? If I wanna break it up like that, I can say that's 20 plus the 16 is 36. So I get my answer of 36. Same as if I skip counted by six, right? So today's focus is finding the area of a rectangle when something is covering part of it. Do you guys remember your HLA assessment that we took right before break? I'm just gonna show you one more example. And you have this window pane, right? And it said there was a window pane and people were looking out of the window pane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And there was this window pane. But then right on top of it, what was there? <clears throat> There was this big tree on top of it, right? So you had this tree that was sort of drawn on top. Let's make it a pretty tree here, right? You had a tree coming out, and then you had these leaves, and we couldn't see any of this stuff inside, could we? Right? But you were still asked to find the area of the whole window pane, and a lot of you were wondering, well, does that include the parts underneath? So now you know all you have to do is count the side length, how many tiles on this side, count the side length, how many tiles on this side, and then you're gonna multiply those side lengths to find the area of the whole window pane, even though some of it's covered up by that view of the tree. 
So with that, today you're going to go take a look. You've got some rectangles that I'm asking you to find the area of, and parts of the rectangles are erased or crossed off or covered by a rug, and I want you to find the area underneath. Make sure you read the directions. Label your side lengths, write your multiplication sentences that will match, and make sure you remember to include your units. Good luck, have fun, and let me know if you need any help.